The FIA European Track Racing Championship takes a stop in Belgium. Round six at Zolder kicks off on Friday afternoon with a small, nice trip to the marketplace at Huisden Zolder. Lots of spectators and attention from the fans, a great attraction to the racetracks, an advertisement for their own cause. On the most traditional racetrack, about 80 kilometers east of Brussels, the capital of Belgium, the last third of the European Track Racing Championship season gets underway. In the paddock, on and off the track, the late summer weather attracts many fans. A glimpse at the championship table shows that Jochen Hahn, the dominant driver this season, already has a gap of 75 points to his nearest opponent, Spaniard Antonio Albafetti. From 2nd to 7th, there are just 38 points between them. Everything is still open. Jochen Hahn is in his best shape this year. Nine victories already. The five times European champion is on his way to a sixth title. Professionality, that has been the secret for success at Hahn Racing for many years now. Success isn't luck, that's for sure. We prepared well for this season, everyone agrees. When you've got a run, you have a run. When it doesn't go well, it simply doesn't. At the moment, it's going well. I'm highly motivated, we have a great atmosphere within the team, and that's how I get into the racetrack and I'm relaxed. And then we work a little more on the racetrack, optimizing it. And in my opinion, I can even improve my driving, try to use every second and to really optimize my driving. For Antonio Albafetti, it's most important to secure second position as towards the end of the season, they're slowly running out of budget. The highlight is still to come. The final weekend of the ETRC is in the Spanish town of Jarama, close to Madrid. Yeah, I mean, with Adam and uh, Steffi and Norby, I mean, I think that it's very tight in, in P2, P3, P4. Uh, so yeah, more or less the battle is to keep the second place, you know, I mean, Jochen is very strong, uh, he has a lot of points in front, so I think it's quite difficult to catch him, so we have to focus on the, on the second place. And Adam Lachko, it's the same for him. Jochen Hahn isn't a real topic for anyone anymore. The Czech hopes that the fight between him and Antonio Albafetti will continue until the season finale at Harama. This season is the strongest season what I remember in my history in track racing because every racing weekend in time practice and in race all the competition is very very close and in time practice it's really really close it's tense it's uh, it's very very nice for fighting and I think it's also for spectators it's way more relaxed in the Grammar Cup. There are only two drivers in that lead battle competing for the championship class title. Oli James, the Brit of the Czech team Bagheera Racing, and Luis Rafenko, the Spaniard driving for truck sport Lutz Bernau. Both drivers just five points apart of each other ahead of Zolda. It's a nice thing, we come to every weekend and uh, we're still leading the, the Grammar Cup. It's getting tight. Every weekend we come uh, hoping to either extend the lead or keep the lead. We know which circuits suit the truck best, but uh, for sure here from Zolder last year I want a, a repeat of what we did last year. Well, it looks quite difficult. He wants to be there, I want to be there, and this is a very technical circuit, so I have to control how to brake and to regulate the brake setup as well as the general balance of the track. But I believe I will be there fighting for it. 
eh, regularlas muy bien, eh, equilibrar un poco el camión en cuanto a arreglajes y bueno, creo que, que sí, que, que estaré ahí peleando por ello. Saturday at noon, high noon. Many spectators have come to see the action live when it's race time for the first time this weekend. Quickest in Super Pole, Jochen Hahn, his ninth pole position in a row. The tenth in 11 rounds, an incredible rate for the man from Altensteig in the south of Germany. He's still taking his opponents incredibly seriously, given his success and dominance. Antonio is really good at this track, it's his favourite one. Of course, he would never say that and will always put Harama first, but I've been competing with Antonio for 20 years now and he has always been a little bit better than me on this track. Not this time, the Spaniard, let's say Mr Zolder, 55 thousandths of a second slower than his constant rival Jochen Hahn is on P2. It's very close. But of course, Jochen is very strong this year, so it will be difficult. I mean, I have to keep Adam behind, you know. That's the important thing for the championship. But yeah, I mean, if I have any opportunity, I will try for sure. I will try to make a, as much as pressure as I can to Jochen and see if everything goes well. On the second rope, Adam Lachko in his Bagheera Freightliner lining up third. The top three in the championship are also in their positions for the first race, but Lachko is about three tenths slower than Hahn and Albafetti. Time to release the race trucks. The start, as always, a rolling start. From 70 kilometers an hour, they're accelerating to almost 160. Jochen Hahn, unusually for him, has a bad start fighting with wheel spin. Antonio Albafetti takes the chance and overtakes. He leads with Hahn second and Lachko third. Just like pearls on a string, the trucks are coming on the reverse straight, the back straight of the circuit. Kurzim runs fourth, then Kish. Behind him, it's Reinert and Halm. In the midfield, Right in front of and into the chicane, there's contact between Ollie Janes and David Jenkins, the two Brits. Janes claims the lead of the race in the Grammar Cup class. Up front, Albafetti, Lee Tarn and then Lachko. But Janes is ninth overall, leading that Grammar Cup. Nearest opponent, Louis Rafenko, only 15th. Sasha Lentz needs to head to the pits early in the race. Electrical problems with his sensor lead to retirement. For eight laps, it's relatively relaxed. And then the French driver, Dominique Orsini, in his black truck, is overtaken to be lapped by the top three. Albafetti is blocked a little bit. Jochen Hahn pushes on, seizes his chance, and he claims the lead on the start-finish straight, having the advantage down to the first corner on the inside line. The German in the Iveco is the race leader on lap nine. Two laps later, on board with Norbert Kisch, who is still in fifth. Behind him, René Reinert and Steffi Halm, who are fighting hard. Reinert has the bit between his teeth. There's contact between them. I was next to him sometimes, but of course never on the same line. He then closed the door. I was a little bit mad because of the way he did it. At the end, I just thought to pass him. Well, it's easier said than done, but he made a small mistake accelerating onto the start and finish line, and that gave me the opportunity to go to the inside and break next to him. And this is what the manoeuvre looks like, captured from the rear camera of Norbert Kish, who was able to break away thanks to the fight between the two Iveco pilots. After 12 laps, the chequered flag is waved. Jochen Hahn takes the race win, his 10th of the season, ahead of Antonio Albafetti and Adam Lachko. It's a very happy Jochen Hahn who lets go of the steering wheel to celebrate.
When you have the same level and you manage to be leading, you can usually manage the pace. I only saw that he was getting a little bit slower under braking at the turn in, and that's a sign that the front tyres are starting to become weak. That's when I pushed for one last go, and I got lucky when Orsini was in the way. It was a bad position for Antonio, and I have to honestly say that I was able to overtake thanks to a bit of luck. Congratulations from Jochen Hahn to Antonio Albacete, but the Spaniard is really disappointed. It was a shame because we couldn't win the race, but anyway, bad luck, bad luck. Now you're really disappointed. Yeah, I am, I am. Yeah. But anyway, thank you. Thank you. Applause for the top three drivers. Jochen Hahn ahead of Antonio Albacete and Adam Lachko. Confirmation of the results, Hahn from Albathete and Lachko with Andre Kurz in fourth from Norby Kish, Steffi Halm, then Rene Reiner at seventh, and Terry Gibbon coming home in eighth. Ollie James, tenth, Lewis Rafenko, thirteenth, losing important points in the fight for the Grammar Cup title. But Jochen Hahn extends his ETRC championship lead even further. The second race at Zolder has the British driver Terry Gibbon on pole position. He's the only one here with a right-hand drive truck. Gibbon, eighth in the first race, hopes to have a better run from P1 than at Most. Hopefully, we'll be trying, definitely. Uh, a bit better pace this weekend, so I'm optimistic that we should be able to get a good result this time. Second on the grid is René Reinert, his blue Iveco number 77. He's already claimed two reverse grid race wins this season. Third is Steffi Halm, who is waiting for her first race win of the season. She'll start right behind Gibbon, hoping he's very strong. Terry starts from pole position and first needs to be overtaken. Maybe he won't be able to do as good times as the others starting behind him, but still, he proved he can keep his position just like he did in the first race. But I think we can be very excited to see how the start goes and what the race will be like. The start signal, usually supported by a team member via the radio as the green lights are normally only able to be seen by the first four trucks. On board, looking back from Albathetti's rig, there's Janes and Jenkins and a crash. Jose Rodriguez is also part of that. Irving Klein Nagelbort goes through the gravel. There are trucks everywhere. It's incredibly hard to see anything. Dave Jenkins is on his way out of the gravel through the dust. I think the first of the pushes came from Jamie Anderson, but I don't know whether he'd been pushed or not. And then, and then obviously once I was offline, I was in the wrong place at the wrong speed and everybody was pushing. The trucks are driving slowly. The race is interrupted as Fabio Nola, the young German in his Mercedes-Benz rig from Team Tankpool Fierance Fanzig, is stuck in the gravel at the end of the start-finish straight. I slipped right into a smoke cloud. Couldn't see the outlines of a truck, tried to steer. Refrenko passed on the left. Uh, the number 15, Karnagelbord, on the right. I was stuck in the middle and was almost able to avoid it, touching Jenkins only on the side. But then the truck was damaged and the steering broke. Ruiz Refenko had a flat tyre. That leads to the Spaniard going to the pits to change his tyre and needing to restart from there. The second start attempt. This time everything is going smoothly towards the first turn. All of the tracks manage to get through safely. Sasha Lentz at the back of the field after his bad luck in race one, and Rafenko is able to join in from the pits. Terry Gibbon leading again. Rafenko joins in, and he's got work to do. Gibbon is the race leader, Rene Reiner second. In third, it's Norbert Kish with Lachko running in fourth. That means Steffi Halm has lost that third position from the grid. But then there is drama. Dominique Orsini rolls to the outside at the start, finish straight due to motor problems. And with the truck parked, again the race is interrupted. 
almost an hour after the first start of the race, the third attempt gets underway. The race has only 10 laps instead of 12. The original two already part of the result to be added to the remainder. On board with Alba Fetti, the Spaniard fifth this time, ahead of Lachko, Kurzim and Hahn. Hahn is close to Lachko, the top three in the championship, together again. Lap three, the top eight very close together. René Reinert leads from Halm, Kish, Albafete, Lachko, Hahn, Kurzim and Lentz. They're all within less than four seconds of each other. Then I saw that Norby had to start fighting with Antonio and the rest getting slower and that's when I thought I'd leave some air for René so that we can push forward. That worked very well and the last two or three laps we managed to close the gap but I didn't see any way to pass him as he didn't make any mistakes. René Reinert wins the shortened race just ahead of Steffi Halm, Norbert Kisch in third. It's another reverse grid win for the German logistics man. René Reinert wins at Zolder. At the beginning, I was a little nervous or just slightly out of rhythm, uh, not being used to spending so much time in the truck, I guess. I don't know. But after a while, I found my pace. Steffi was behind me, showed herself every once in a while in the rear mirror, but she wasn't as dangerous as it might have seemed. The combined result has René Reinert as the winner, Steffi Halm second and Norbert Kisch third. That's exactly the way they finished the second 10-lap part. So Reinert, Halm and Kisch the top three from Albafetti. Lachko ahead of Hahn with Kurzim seventh from Lentz, Rodriguez and Oli Janes in tenth. That means he extends the gap to Luis Rafenko, who isn't doing too well at Zolder. He ends the race only 14th. At each ETRC weekend, the rescue team practices the recovery of a crashed truck's driver on the racetrack. We take a closer look at Norbert Kish. A possible injury in the spine, not infrequent in racing, requires extra caution. The rescue activity is therefore practiced over and over again. The driver this time passively active when up to 10 paramedics and doctors exercise for the emergency. I'm being told that I have to be like unconscious so you know I'm just sitting there like and they're moving my hand around and everything you know so it's uh, it's really a strange feeling and uh, I hope it doesn't happen to anybody you know. The Sunday at Zolder is all about truck racing. Jochen Hahn is again on pole position, his 11th of the season. A tenth of a second behind him is Adam Lachko, and the Bagheera team has optimised the setup overnight, and it looks to have worked. The first corner is to the left, it's good for Jochen, but after it's two, two corners to the right, it's good for me. Maybe when we go side by side, it's interesting. Third on the grid is Norbert Kish, who scored 16 points the day before. A small drop of happiness after his zero at Most. The third race starts with a wild attack from René Reinert in the blue Iveco. He didn't qualify too well, starting only eighth on the grid. The back straight on lap one. Jochen Hahn ahead of Adam Lachko and Norbert Kisch. The man who lies second in the championship, Antonio Albafetti, is only sixth, having small issues with his shock absorber in qualifying. That led to starting fifth for Mr. Zolder. He needs to be happy with sixth in this opening phase of the race and then push on. In front of around 15,000 fans watching the race live, the duel carries on. Albafetti battles with Kurzin. Down to the Telamenbocht. The Spaniard sees a chance, but can he go through? They lean on each other. Kurzin gets forced wide. Albafetti knocks down the corner marker. Kurzim cuts in, but he retakes the place. Sasha Lentz is battling with René Reinert. They're squabbling over seventh and eighth, and also, of course, to be on the front row for the second race of the day. 
Lens really wants to overtake, but he gets forced out wide into the gravel. Pendulum's across the road, and he's in the gravel on the other side of the circuit. Can he dig himself out? The answer is no. I saw my chance to attack, and that's what I tried at the beginning of the start-finish straight. But I lost ground, and when I tried to get the track back in, I lost all grip and went to the gravel all on my own. Auto wieder zurückholen wollte, habe ich absolut keinen Grip mehr gehabt, und das Auto ist nur abgeflogen halt. Ja, mit dem Auto, das Auto war alleine unterwegs quasi. In the Grammar Cup, Ollie James is again better placed than Rafenko. The Brit in his Freightliner with a solid performance, while the Spaniard can't seem to overtake the opposition after a bad qualifying. Jochen Hahn celebrates his 11th victory of the season, even lapping Orsini, the French driver at the rear of the field. Lachko, Kiss, Halm, Kurzim and Albertetti tried chasing him down, but there are more than eight seconds between Hahn and the rest. The ladies, Hahn and Lachko, celebrate. Mr Lachko and Mr Hahn are together as well. Everybody happy after another podium finish. For the Bagheera team, it's a very special trophy, as we found out later. The applause was well earned, especially Adam Lachko, very excited about his second place. This is a very important uh, trophy for our team because this is the 1,000th trophy in Bagheera history. We have one expert and he counting everything and in most he say, OK, when it's Sunday, don't cancel, maybe we have 1,000th trophy. But we must wait until the soldier, and now we have it. A look at the results of race three. Jochen Hahn ahead of Adam Lachko and Norbert Kish, with Steffi Halm fourth from Andre Kurzim and Antonio Albertetti. Jamie Anderson is eighth, leading the pack for race four. Tenth, yep, Ollie James looks like he's found his favourite spot. Again, he's better placed than Luis Rafuenko. Again, he increases his lead in the Grammar Cup. Race number four with the Ford F Max at the front, the official truck of the ETRC. While Jamie Anderson is on pole position for the final race. Next to him, Rene Reinert. On the second row, a good view is secured for Antonio Albertetti, who has Andre Kurzim alongside him. For the last time, the giants of motorsport are unleashed. Anderson in his white truck, number seven, leads down to turn one. On board with Albertetti, he sees contact between Kurzim and Reinert. Kurzim goes ahead, but Reinert fights back on the inside. Arriving at the first chicane, Kish is fifth. He's got Steffi Helm behind him from 160 kilometers an hour, break down to 80. It's not always easy. Inevitably, there's contact. Drivers go across the curbs. On board with Adam Lachko. That one, he's running behind Kish, sixth, breaking down to the Boulderberg hairpin, but there's drama. A brake problem. Lachko goes into the back of Kish, he's out of the race. But, uh, I'm happy it's, uh, it's happened in the corner where it's happened because there is the place for uh, exit and rescue all truck. <laughs> it was quite a big hit, but you know, it's technical. Things happen, you know, sometimes you break a brake disc and uh, that's what happened to Adam, you know, so, you know, it happens. A sad end to the weekend for Adam Lachko, who stays there for on that same number of championship points. No score in race four. Especially disappointing as Antonio Albertetti is on the prowl, gaining places and gaining points. He moves ahead of Jamie Anderson. Andre Kurzim goes through two, and Anderson soon loses more places as Reiner, Kish, and Halm are all queued up behind him. Antonio Albertetti claims victory, his second of the season, more than five seconds ahead of Kurzim and Reinert. There's great excitement in the team. Don't touch racing for second place. The crew from Berlin more than happy with the result. And delight too for Antonio Albertetti. A good way to end the weekend at his favourite circuit. Albertetti the winner from Kurzim, Reinert, Kish, Halm and Lenz. Oli James finishes only 11th, but opponent Luis Rofenko, the teammate of Antonio Albertetti, retired early. Now what's good? We finish first, we take points, which is important for the championship. 
So, very happy. The Spaniard on the podium, surrounded by two Germans, Andre Kurzim and René Reinert. In the overall championship, Jochen Hahn increases his lead to 85 points and now has the chance to secure the title in the penultimate weekend of the season. In spite of the huge points lead of Jochen Hahn, sometimes you also need some luck. In the fourth race, the German driver almost had a crash with Ollie Janes, but Hahn had luck on his side, and despite a lingering flat tyre, he still managed to claim three points for the championship. Where would I have been if that didn't happen? Probably I would have stayed out of trouble, sixth, fifth, so I only lost two or three points, and that's why I can only look back with a smiling eye. The truck didn't get any damage apart from the wheel rims. Alcour will fix that, and then we will get a new one. Then we are heading to Le Mans. We'll be there too, thanks. You're welcome. We're heading straight to where Jochen Hahn secured his fifth championship last year. Sounds like a good omen.